Hey there, so I just want to go over the hardware uh, for the RoboTank controller. Um, this is what we have. We've got the AC power bar, um, eight outlets, they're all switched, and we have the deluxe controller and the standard controller. And this is a little optical sensor extension. Uh, it goes with the deluxe controller. So you can see they're all in a case here. This is the plug and play form. Um, this case is printed for the Pi 4, and there'll be a different case for the Pi 3 as the ports are slightly different and then there will be one for the Pi Zero um, W and that will just have clean walls on those um, as there's no ports on it so we can open this up let's see if I can do that and that's our lid there and there's little edges here that go inside and that's where the screws go and then you can see our board is there and our Pi just plugs in and the board comes out and that's our board so this is what you can get for the DIY kit and the assembled kit this is the assembled version and what you would receive and then in the DIY form you would have to solder these green connectors and these header pins and this and this would already be mounted um, none of its polarity sensitive and just your standard headers so you should be able to solder that if you like a little project and then to put it in your case, you just got to get it the right way here. Drop it in. And you're good to go. Screw it in place. There's five screws, I believe, that hold that one in place. Then here's our standard controller. And it's the same for the Pi. Uh, there'll be a different case for what Pi you use. Unfortunately, I don't have a face plate. Um, these will have face plates on them so that you can see what the ports are for and the pinouts. Here's a little example for something else I made. And you can see it'll just get glued on here and it'll fit nicely. Um, so the deluxe controller over the base or the standard controller, uh, the difference there is um, this has some more DC ports, some more analog ports, uh, a couple more pins for some temperature sensors. It's got a pH circuit if you choose that. I left that as an option because the circuit is quite expensive, so you can add it or not. Um, if you don't add it, I can leave the hole here and you can add it uh, in the future. Um, we have two uh, DB9s here that connects our power bar. You can see one on there. The standard controller only has one of those. However, there are there is a set of header pins that comes out here, and um, you can connect a second power bar if you want. So we'll just open this one. If I can get in there. There we go. So you can see the cases are strong. <laughs> take of use like that and here's our Pi you can see it's plugged in and I'm just gonna unplug it show you how that goes so it just comes out easy put it back in you just line the pins up make sure your pins are lined up and then push it down and you're in place so I'll take that back out and here's our pH circuit it will be soldered to the board so it'll be in one piece the board and it and that's our board. So again, this is the... Ah, I had my finger on the camera. Sorry about that. Um, this is the deluxe controller in the assembled form. And then if you get the DIY form, you would solder all these headers and green connectors. And that is that. So it just goes in easy like that. And here's a little optical sensor. Now what this is... You can see it's got a USB port on here, and there's a USB port on here. The standard controller doesn't have this feature. Um, so you can plug this into this with any standard uh, USB 2.0 A to A connector or cable, and then you can plug in one of these optical sensors directly. They come with short wires and this connector, and it's not fun uh, cutting that off. And they're thin wires, and then you've got to extend it. So this just takes all that hassle out, just plugs in directly. The resistor requirements are in here, and then you plug that in, and you can run this as far from the controller as you like. Um, this other green connector is for a float switch, such as this here, and that is designed to cut off DC port 3. 
So that's this port over here and the port beside it is wired to this port. So you can use this port or this port and they'll do the same thing. The standard controller has that same feature where it can use a backup float which cuts the power to DC port 3 but you don't get the nice extension. So that's that. Uh, let's look in our power bar. So you'll notice in the pictures that uh, these are a little low. That will be flush in the final design. Just open this up. If I can find somewhere to get in there. So that's that. And you can see it's all held in place with little edges. And that's where the screws go all along the side of the box. And there's our power bar. And you can see it just lifts out. And that's it there. So you can see the AC outlets. Um, if you get the power bar assembled, you don't get the AC outlets, and you can just solder your own. Um, if there, if the campaign goes well, I'm going to make a small module. It'll be about half the size, and it'll have screw terminal connectors like your standard Arduino uh, module, and you can uh, connect that way. So yeah, once it's together, just line that up. Drop it in place, screw it down, and you're good to go. No wires internally, so it's a nice clean design. So that's that. Um, the plug and play kits, they do come with a USB cable so that you can connect. The deluxe one comes with the USB cable, so you can connect that little box. Um, both plug and play kits come with the VGA connector, so you can connect a power bar. And if you get the plug and play with two power bars, you get two of those. Um, you get the heavy duty uh, AC power cord for the power bar and the one thing you are required to buy is a power supply like something like this uh, this is a 5 amp it's got your standard 2.1 by 5.5 uh, millimeter barrel connector and so that's readily available um, I just don't have a good source for these and you can just pick it up yourself for the same cost cheaper actually than by the time I got it to you so you need that for any kit and you will need a Pi for any kit um, there's a limit on buying the uh, Pi Zero which is all you need for this you don't need a Pi 4 or Pi 3 actually this Pi 4 gets very hot um, kind of disappointing but I guess it is a computer powerful computer um, so yeah so you might want a Pi 3 or less um, just for the heat sake um, keep your electricity bill down <laughs> So yeah, that's our kit there. Um, you also get these connectors. Uh, these are little screw terminal pluggable connectors that plug into the different plugs there. You get enough for all the plugs that are on the controller. And I think that does it. Um, also in the plug and play kit, I'll be adding a little uh, ATO bracket similar to this. It's going to be different uh, just to hold some sensors. So you have that if you need it. Well, hope you like it. Um, Thanks for everything, thanks for your support, and please share, like, and uh, that would be appreciated. Have a great day.